So good afternoon. So we will go on with the lecture. So today we will talk about. So last time we finished uh, talking about uh, algebraic closure, but uh, now we want to talk about splitting fields. So. Uh, so that is, you know, if we have a, if K is a field and uh, F is a polynomial with coefficients in X, we are interested in a field where F splits into a product of linear factors. So, and we want to find somehow the smallest such field, find the smallest field. over which F splits into linear factors. This will be called the splitting field. And we will see that uh, it's uh, uniquely determined up to isomorphism, up to K isomorphism. So first, we want to see that if we are given a polynomial f in kx, we can find a field where f has a zero, so a field extension where f, um, so the smallest field extension thing here, so that we can find the field extension of k over which f has a zero. And we have, in some sense, seen this before, but uh, let me state it. So let uh, f be, again, our polynomial in kx. And we want it to be irreducible. Then there exists a simple algebraic extension So maybe I call it f over k, uh, such, such that uh, over f, uh, uh, maybe I call it l, <laughs> I don't want it. OK, such that over l, f has a 0, uh, such that f has a 0 in l. And we can also say. Uh, what the degree of the field extension is, uh, and uh, we have that the degree of L over K is equal to the degree of F. Well, in some sense, so we just do again what we did before, we can use our f to construct this uh, field. Namely, uh, we will find that you know as this thing is irreducible, it's a maximal ideal in kx, and we can take the quotient uh, by this the ideal generated by f by this maximal ideal. This will be a field, and this will be the field we want. So the only maybe funny thing is uh, why f will have a zero over this field. So proof. So we want to use f to construct the field in the usual way. So we know that f is irreducible that we had assumed. So it means that f is a maximal ideal in the principal ideal domain uh, kx. And so <coughs> no, we have used this many times. So thus, if I put f to be the quotient, no, it was l, uh, kx modulo there by gen by f, this is a field. 
And uh, as we had seen before, we can identify K as uh, the subfield of L consisting of the constant of the classes of the constant polynomials. So it's a field, so L over K is a field extension. And uh, so now the claim is that our polynomial F has a zero in this field, L. You know, we have to somehow see what the zero is. And I claim the zero is namely the class of the polynomial X. So we have, a, you know, we look at, so this is equivalence classes of polynomials modulo this ideal. And we take the equivalence class of the polynomial X. And I claim that this equivalence class of polynomial X is is zero of this polynomial. And this is actually essentially, by definition, we know that zero is equal to the class of F. Because after all, we have divided by it. And if we write uh, F equal to sum I equals zero to N, say, let's say N is the degree of F A I X to the I, uh, then uh, this means we have uh, this is sum i equals 0. To end this, uh, taking the equivalence class, this is a ring homomorphism. So we can write this as sum a i x to the i. And you have to remember that a constant polynomial is identified with a corresponding number in k. So this is just sum i equals zero, 0 to n a i x to the i. And you, know, you see precisely that this says that the polynomial x is a 0 of f. So let me write this out. So this is equal to f of x. No? Thus, x is a 0 of f. And um, clearly, so it's somehow we have done this in this very kind of tautological way. We have created this 0, this field extension, where this thing has 0 kind of out of nowhere, just uh, using the polynomial. So. <clears throat> And um, <clears throat> it is clear that you know, L is equal to K, the class of X, because every element in this quotient field is equivalence class under this relation of a polynomial. And so this means it's the same as the, uh, you know, the polynomial in the equivalence class of X. No, because for G, an element in Kx, we have the class of G is equal to G of X by the same as here. So now finally, we want to see that the degree of this field extension is uh, equal to the degree of f. So the point is that um, f is irreducible and uh, by over kx. By dividing by the uh, by the leading coefficient, we 
you can assume f is monic so we have an irreducible polynomial <coughs> which has a zero uh, an irreducible monic polynomial which has a zero in this uh, extension so it means it's the minimal polynomial so thus f is the minimal polynomial of x and so we know that the degree of the field extension by adding an element is equal to the degree of the minimal polynomial by some result that we had before so in this situation so so remark you don't think i so in in this situation where we just uh, make the field extension in this way we say we have formally adjoined a root of the polynomial we say formally a join a root a root is another word for a zero in this case of f so we so it's kind of we say you know formally because we just we don't need an another field in which this thing has a zero we just create this other field by uh, by this construction Okay, so <clears throat> so we, in particular, we find that uh, so corollary. So let uh, we have again our feet f in kx be a polynomial. of degree n uh, <coughs> then uh, so bigger than zero uh, then uh, there exists uh, a field extension so L over K of degree at most m and such that f has a zero. In L. So the here the, the previous result was uh, we find this when f is an irreducible polynomial. If f is not irreducible, we take any irreducible factor of f, and uh, according to this, uh, this will have a zero in an extension of the at degree at most the degree of that irreducible factor. And the degree of that irreducible factor is at most the degree of the polynomial. So it's a trivial consequence. Okay, and now we want to. So this means that if we are given a polynomial, we can kind of adjoin roots. Uh, so we first adjoin a root, and then we divide by x minus this root. Then we have a polynomial of degree one less. We can again join roots until this thing splits into linear factors. So there will be a field extension where f uh, splits into linear factors, and we take the smallest such and call it the splitting field of f. So definition so let f in kx be a polynomial of some degree a finite extension C 
say uh, L over K is called a splitting field of F over K uh, if uh, the following two properties hold. So first, it should, F should split. So F splits over K over L into linear factors. which, as you remember, means that we can, can write F equal to B times X minus A1 times and so on onto X minus AN, where the B and the AI are elements of L. And uh, as I said, the second statement is that L should be in a suitable sense, minimal with this property. So F does not split over any intermediate field of L over K into linear factors. <clears throat> so second, F does not split over any intermediate field. Remember that is a field which is a field extension of, uh, of K which is contained in L. So now we want to show that such splitting fields always exist. It's kind of already hinted it, and then some uh, simple properties how one can check that something is a splitting field. So <clears throat> for simplicity, I now will assume that my polynomial is always monic. I can always uh, achieve this by dividing by the leading coefficient. So it somehow just simplifies my notation if I do that. So let f in kx be a monic polynomial. You know, well, anyway. um, so the first statement is, if L over K is a field extension uh, such that it's in some sense, these are all kind of rather trivial statements, but anyway, such that F splits over L into linear factors. That means we can write F equal to X minus A1 times X minus N. We assume still that the degree is N. Um, then if I take the field extension, so the extension which lies inside L is bigger than K, which I obtain by just joining the roots I get a splitting field. So if I take K, A1 to AN is a splitting field. Of F over K. In some sense, if you think of it, it's completely obvious. But anyway, we will uh, prove it explicitly.
<coughs> so the second statement is there exists a splitting field for our f. So I, maybe we should again fix the degree here of degree n. So there exists a splitting field um, of this polynomial. Um, so L over k of f of degree. So the degree of the extension is at most uh, L over k is smaller equal to n factorial. So if n is the degree, then the degree of the splitting field is at most n factorial. And uh, the third statement is, again, quite simple. So if I have a splitting field, so L over k be a splitting field of f, of f over k, and uh, let, say, f be uh, intermediate field. So of this extension, so f lies between k and l. It's a subfield and l and contains k as a subfield. Uh, then uh, uh, l is also a splitting field. of f. over the field f. So these are all very simple facts. It's kind of an exercise to see this. <coughs> but I just, I will still carry out the details. So let's take our field extension here as given by one. So let L over K be such a field extension. Such that uh, F splits. Over L. So these AI are elements of L. So we want to show that this is a splitting field. Clearly, F splits over K A1 to An into linear factors. Because, you know, after all the elements are here, no? We have to, you know, we have to, uh, you know, that it splits here means uh, you know, that you can write this with coefficients in the field, and the, you know, the coefficients are pre precisely have the ai, so this is certainly true. So, <coughs> we have to see it's the splitting field, so that no smaller field, that it cannot split over any smaller field. Well, in some sense, that's also obvious, but I just still carry it out. So assume, so maybe I call this field here F. So assume we have a, there's an intermediate field. We have a, a M over K is an intermediate field. So that means I mean, and uh, so M is contained in F. Then you have to see that M must be equal to F. So, and such that uh, 
or polynomial f splits over m. So that means we can write f equal to x minus c1 times x minus cn, where the ci are elements in m. That means that it splits. But then, obviously, if I take any of our my ai's, so for all i, if I take uh, f of ai, we know that this is equal to 0. And this uh, I can write out as ai minus c1 times uh, ai minus cn in, in f, for instance. But if this is 0, you know, we are in a, you know, we are in a field, so we have no 0 divisors. This product can only be 0 if one of the factors is 0. So that means that ai is equal to cj for some j. And this is true for all i. So for all i, this element ai is equal to cj. So in particular, it follows that ai is an element in M for all i. So thus, I find that uh, k a1 to a m, a n, which was our field f, is contained uh, in m, because this is the smallest field extension of k, which contains these elements. And m is a field extension which contains them. So it must be contained in them. OK, so this uh, shows number two. And now, no, this shows number one. And now we, number two is uh, uh, by some simple induction. So how do we show part two? So <clears throat> we have our polynomial f of degree n. We have seen that we can find an extension of uh, our field k of degree at most n, the degree of f, where it has a 0. So by the previous corollary, so the one before this, There is a <coughs> oh. uh, there exists an extension, say k one over k, of degree at most n, uh, such that f has a zero in K1. And now we have the obvious thing. So now we put uh, G equal to F. I mean, how do you call the has a zero? Maybe the zero I call A1 in K1. So I can take G equal to F divided by X minus A1. So this is now a polynomial. Is a, is a polynomial in k1 of x of degree uh, n minus 1. So by induction, uh, we know that uh, uh, we know that f splits over uh, 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 field F, which uh, 
is an extension of k1 of degree at most n minus 1 factorial. No? We can prove this by induction. And so um, thus we have that we have that f uh, and obviously we have the degree of f over k is equal to the degree of f over k1 times the degree of f uh, of k1 over k and we know this number is at most at one, uh, n1 factorial. This number is at most n minus 1 factorial. This number is at most n. So this number is smaller or equal to n factorial. So our polynomial f splits over an extension of um, degree at most n factorial. And then we can, uh, and this we can again, as before in part 2, uh, in part 1, find the splitting field of f over k as the subfield generated by the roots. So if uh, a1 to a n are the zeros of uh, f in the field f, then uh, we know that um, uh, k a1 to a n is a splitting field of uh, oponym f over k by part one. And uh, this is a subfield of uh, f. So the degree is uh, uh, at most, you know, so it is, uh, so it's at most smaller than the degree here. In particular, the degree is still smaller than n factorial. So maybe I can still write down. And uh, uh, the degree of k a1 to a n over k is smaller or equal to the degree of f over k, which was, n, which was smaller or equal and factorial. So we are still fine. So finally, you come to part three. And that is uh, really completely obvious. So here the, say, the claim is that um, if we have a, sp a splitting field over k and you have an intermediate field, then L is also a splitting field over the intermediate field. But you know, that's by definition, no? So I just write it above here so that I don't have to immediately write it out. So for three, f splits over k. So, so f is an element in kx, so also in fx. And uh, f splits over k. And it does not split over any intermediate field between small k and, ah, let me see. So L, it was, splits over this field L, if you remember. So L over k is a splitting field, and we take F. So this polynomial F uh, splits over L. And it does not split over any intermediate field except for L between L and k. So in particular, it does not split over any intermediate field between L and F, because these are less fields. Except L. And so that's it. So therefore, by definition of the uh, 
splitting field part 3 is trivial. So now let us look at a few examples which we will also look at again later. So if um, if f is a polynomial of degree d, of degree 2, what do you want? k x polynomial, say an irreducible polynomial of degree 2, then and I have uh, and uh, a is a uh, is zero in an extension, maybe I call it B, is a zero in an extension of K, then we have that the splitting field, so KB is a splitting field. Of F over K. I mean that's uh, obvious because um, if uh, f has one zero, if I divide by the by x minus b, what the rest is a polynomial of degree one, which automatically has a zero, so it splits. And uh, you no, know, I have a joint a root. I mean, if I join the root, then I also have the other root. So this is the splitting field. Let us look at a slightly more interesting example. So, we want to look at the splitting field of um, say x to the 4 plus 1 over q. It is also in the note. So, <coughs> so we take any root. So let uh, alpha, say in complex numbers, be any zero of this polynomial of f. So you know, we have the c is algebraic close, there will be a zero, but anyway, we have this zero. <coughs> then we claim that q alpha is the splitting field. is a splitting field. Of f over q. So, I mean, I will see, we'll see in a moment, but this shows in particular we know that the q alpha, I mean, alpha is a zero, I mean, one can show uh, that this polynomial is irreducible, anyway, we will not maybe. But uh, so this is a polynomial of degree 4. So the extension here has at most degree 4. On the other hand, the, you know, the theorem that we had before guarantees that there is a splitting field of degree at most 4 factorial, which would be uh, much more. So sometimes the degree of the splitting field is much smaller, even though this polynomial, as it turns out, is irreducible. Um, and so let's see why uh, this is the splitting field. So we choose, we have chosen a zero. So I claim, uh, so the claim is the splitting field. So assume we have this alpha. So then you see that if we take minus alpha, then this is also zero. You know, because if alpha to the four, is equal to minus 1, then also minus alpha to the 4 is equal to minus 1, because we just multiply by minus 1 to the 4. And in the same way, we have uh, 
1 over alpha and minus 1 over alpha are also zeros of f in k alpha. So we see we have four zeros here, as many as the degrees, so it's split into linear factors. I mean, as long as we know that these are different, and they are also different. Because, um, well, if alpha is equal to minus alpha, it would follow that alpha is equal to zero, but this is uh, uh, impossible because alpha to the four is supposed to be equal to one. And if uh, alpha is equal to plus or minus one over alpha, then I can multiply by alpha. It follows that alpha squared is equal to plus minus one. And therefore, alpha to the four uh, will be equal to one and not equal to minus one. So uh, it is not possible that, uh, <coughs> that these are equal. So thus, uh, thus it follows. Uh, we have four different roots here, four different zeros, and therefore we know that uh, our polynomial f must just factor as a product of these linear factors. So thus we have that x to the four plus one is equal to x minus alpha times x plus alpha x minus one over alpha x plus one over alpha. So in particular, our polynomial splits into linear factors over k. So thus uh, f, so x to the 4 plus 1 splits over k alpha into linear factors. And as we have obtained uh, this field extension by joining a 0, of this polynomial, we know that this is the splitting field. Because it means that adjoining this one element is the same as adjoining all four of them. And therefore, uh, k alpha is the splitting field. So it was q. I don't know whether here it's already has been, we have worked over q. And uh, therefore, Q alpha is the splitting field. A splitting field of F over Q. So sometimes it's enough to just add one zero in order to get all of them. Um, Finally, let's look at one case where this is not true. Um, this is also, so this is the, the splitting field say of uh, the polynomial x to the third minus two over q. So obviously, we can see that um, <coughs> uh, over C, we can write uh, this polynomial. I mean, as you might have learned in high school, as uh, x times uh, x minus the third root of 2. So we take the third root of 2 in the complex numbers in the usual way, uh, x minus uh, c e to the 2 pi i divided by 3, third root of 2, and x minus e to the 2 pi i. So twice 2 pi i divided by 3, third root of 2. Okay. So we know that 
uh, these three numbers are zeros of this polynomial because if I take, I mean, third root of two is, uh, you know, just the, the, the real number with the property that its third power is two. And uh, if I have e to the two pi i divided by three and to take it to the power three, it gives me one. And so these three are there for the roots and therefore this is the product. So it splits uh, into linear factors like this. So therefore, Uh, we know that uh, Q third root of 2 and e to the 2 pi i divided by 3. So if I join these two elements, this is a splitting field. Of uh, this polynomial over Q. Because... Um, um, it's easy to see that uh, if we have this element and this element, then obviously we have these three elements in the field. No? And conversely, if we have an extension of Q which contains these three elements, then we can just uh, divide this by this and get this. And so the field extension given by adjoining these two elements is the same as the field extension given by adjoining these three elements. And so uh, if we join these three, we know it's the splitting field, and so this is the splitting field. Okay. So <clears throat> let's see. And we can see. So it is clear that the degree of Q third root. So by the Eisenstein criterion uh, with the number two, this is an irreducible polynomial. So if you join any root, the degree of the field extension is three, is equal to the degree of the polynomial. So we know that the degree of the field extension Q, third root of two over Q is equal to three. And on the other hand, we also know, so, this number, e to the 2 pi i divided by 3, is certainly not in Q a joint third root of 2, because this is a real number, and this is not a real number. It's not an element in Q third root of 2, because it is not in R. On the other hand, if we divide this polynomial by the polynomial, this x minus third root of 2, we get a polynomial of degree 2. So the degree of this field extension must be 2. So so q, if we take this, So Q third root of two, the degree of this field extension is two. And so altogether, the degree of the field extension uh, of the, the degree of the splitting field over Q is six. So this is equal to 6, which uh, is 3 factorial. So in this case, we actually do find that the degree of the splitting field is equal to, uh, uh, to the factorial of the degree of the polynomial. OK, so that was uh, these splitting fields. I have these examples. And now we want to. Again, talk about um, 
extensions of field isomorphisms. So remember, not very long ago, we were talking about extensions of field isomorphisms to uh, simple algebraic extensions. So if you have an isomorphism of two fields and we have a simple algebraic extension on one side and on the other side, given by polynomials which are related by this isomorphism, then uh, uh, we found that uh, the field isomorphism can be extended to the extension. And in fact, it can be extended uniquely when we require that a given root of uh, the minimal polynomial is sent to a given root or the of, of the minimal polynomial on the other side. And here we want to prove something similar. We want to, except for this uniqueness, we want to show that if we have a, a field extension, if we uh, have a field isomorphism between two fields and we have a polynomial, and the polynomial which is the image of it under this field isomorphism, and we look at the corresponding uh, splitting fields, then the isomorphism between the original fields extends to an isomorphism of the splitting fields. But we do not claim to have the uniqueness. And that actually will is the thing which makes uh, Galois theory non-trivial. So let me state it. So extension of field isomorphisms to splitting fields So we will always be interested in these field isomorphisms because finally we will want to study field extensions in so L over K in terms of the K automorphisms of L. So we are somehow interested in how field isomorphisms extend to bigger fields. And so let us do this for the uh, for the splitting fields. So the theorem is the following. So let, so say with more phi from k to k prime be a field isomorphism. And we take, let f be a polynomial in Kx. Maybe, well, whatever. Uh, polynomial. And uh, <clears throat> now remember that we had this, uh, so just remember that we had this. So phi gives us an isomorphism from kx to k prime of x. Now we have, a, we have this map which I called phi star from kx. Maybe I put it not in the theorem, put it here below. So we have phi star from kx to k prime of x, which sends a polynomial sum ai x to the i to uh, some phi of a i x to the i. We used this before when we had a similar theorem for simple algebraic extensions. And I put therefore f prime, so it's not a derivative, it's just notation f prime equal to phi star of f. So let k be the splitting field, be a splitting field of f over k. So large k 
by maybe I don't call it k. So let's say L be a splitting field of f over k, and uh, let L prime be a splitting field of f prime over k prime. Then uh, there is an extension. Then there is an isomorphism from L to L, L prime, which extends phi. So then there exists an isomorphism large phi from L to L prime with uh, uh, phi restricted to k is equal to small phi. You know, by definition, L is a splitting field of F over k, so k is a subfield of L, and so it makes sense. And so in particular, the cases which particularly uh, we are interested in would be, for instance, that uh, k is equal to k prime and phi is the identity. So if k and k prime are two splitting fields of our polynomial f over k, so then this statement says, so I maybe call it again L and L prime, uh, then there exists a k isomorphism uh, phi from L to L prime. So this is just a, a special case here where we have taken k equal to k prime and phi equal to the identity. K isomorphism is just an isomorphism of L, uh, you know, between these fields, which is the identity on k. So, in pass so this means that uh, uh, two splitting fields of the same polynomial of f in kx are k isomorphic. So the splitting field in particular is uh, not really unique, but it's unique up to isomorphism. OK, so let's uh, see how we want to prove that. So somehow, uh, you know, we have before proven a similar statement for simple algebraic extensions. So the, the good strategy might be to somehow use that here, no? to somehow uh, use the fact of simple algebraic extensions uh, to uh, prove the theorem here. And in fact, we can do that. So we make an induction over the degree of L over K. So the case, um, so if uh, the degree of L over K is equal to 1, then it follows that um, L is equal to K. No, that we know. And so that would mean here that F splits over K into linear factors. But uh, this phi is an isomorphism. So if, I, if something splits into linear factors and apply an isomorphism, it still splits into linear factors. Thus, also, f prime 
splits over k prime. And so, you know, we have just uh, uh, k is equal to, uh, so L prime is equal, L is equal to k, L prime is equal to k prime, and phi is our isomorphism, so the statement holds. So phi is an extension of itself. So in this case, the, the start of the induction is clear. So now we have to do the induction step, and for this, we want to use the result for simple algebraic extensions. So we now assume if L over K is bigger than 1. So then it means uh, our polynomial F does not split into linear factors. So it contains an irreducible uh, factor of degree bigger than 1. So then F uh, has an irreducible factor g uh, in kx of degree bigger than 1. No, because if it would factor into linear factors, after all, then it would split. OK. So we will adjoin a root of this, so we, we look at the, what happens if we just take one zero, uh, you know, join one of the zeros of G. We get an intermediate field extension. So we put, uh, let, uh, say, G prime to be, again, applying this isomorphism. With this polynomial we get from G. And this g prime is also irreducible. Because under an isomorphism, irreducible polynomials are, are sent to irreducible polynomials. So over L, this f sp splits into linear factors. So it has all the possible zeros. So also g splits into linear factors. So in particular, there is a zero of G in L. So let A what was the field in L be a zero of G. No, you know. Uh, <coughs> And uh, the same we can apply here. So let A prime in L prime be a zero of G prime. So we have, uh, you know, we know that all zeros, so that, uh, that this splits into linear factors over L, because F does, and it's a factor of it. So we have this. Now, we can look at the extension. So thus, uh, we have Ka over K is a simple algebraic extension. And the same way, K prime of A prime over K is a simple algebraic extension. So now, and we are precisely in the situation of our previous theorem for extension for field isomorphisms for simple al algebraic extensions. So there exists uh, an extension of our, our, uh, uh, of our phi from k to k prime to a map from k a to k prime of a, which sends a to a prime. So by 
previous theorem. about uh, extension of field isomorphisms uh, to simple algebraic extensions. We have that uh, there exists Anyway, so I just hope you can remember. So there exists an isomorphism, maybe phi tilde from Ka to K prime of A prime with um, actually unique, but we don't care, isomorphism. Um, so, which is an extension of phi, so with uh, phi tilde restricted to k is equal to phi, and uh, phi tilde of a is equal to a prime. So there is such a thing. Um, and now, you know, we are kind of done, which uh, might not see. I mean, so it is clear that uh, if we look at the extension L over Ka times uh, Ka over K is equal to the degree of L over K. So it follows as this number was bigger than 1, it's equal to the degree of G. So equal to the degree of G bigger than 1. It follows that the degree of L over Ka is smaller than the degree of L over K. So, <clears throat> and we also know, we just proved it in a, the previous corollary, that um, uh, L is also the splitting field, is a splitting field, of our polynomial f over uh, over ka because we know that if uh, if i have a polynomial with coefficients in the smallest field and i have a, an intermediate field between uh, the smallest field and the splitting field then the the splitting field is also the splitting field over the intermediate field no, that was and basically for trivial reasons. So, <clears throat> therefore, we can apply the um, the induction hypothesis to this extension. No, this extension and the corresponding exp extension here. So, so by induction, replacing k by k of a and k prime by k prime of a prime we have by induction there uh, is an ex there is a field isomorphism uh, phi from l to l prime whose restriction to the smaller field which in this case is ka is uh, the given map which we had called phi tilde. So with phi restricted to Ka is equal to phi tilde. Uh, phi tilde was written in a different 
No? Uh, but um, once we have this, we can also further, I mean, restrict it further to k. So in particular, phi restricted to k is equal to phi because the restriction of phi tilde to k was phi. So <clears throat> here we have constructed our extension of a field isomorphism by this induction. So by somehow uh, reducing it to the case of a simple algebraic extension. But uh, if you look at the proof, you can somehow see that we don't really know very much about uh, how we explicitly can describe this isomorphism. In particular, we have no uniqueness statement. No? So we, <clears throat> you know, we do this inductive proof, and you know, it's not really clear how many. So it's a remark. We have no idea how many extensions um, phi uh, from L to L prime of phi uh, exist. So whether this is unique or whether there are many, so we don't really know. And uh, in fact, uh, you know, the answer in general is also it depends. You know, depending on the field extension, sometimes there's only one extension. Sometimes there are very many. And uh, in some sense, that is the thing which makes uh, the study of field extensions interesting because uh, one can describe, uh, OK. So much uh, for this. How much time? Ah, not very much. So as a, um, now we kind of, so we are slowly approaching Galois theory. So <clears throat> um, we will introduce two properties of field extensions, two nice properties. One property is that the field extension is normal. And another property is that the field extension is separable. So, so uh, and uh, we will see in a moment what they are. But anyway, um, field extension is a Galois extension, and we will want to study mostly Galois extensions if it's both normal and separable. So we want to introduce these two properties that we need in order to be able to study field extensions well, uh, one by one. And so we start with normal extensions. So I maybe just say it again, a field extension will be called so maybe an algebraic field extension well, whatever called uh, a Galois extension if it satisfies two properties namely if it is normal and separable. So we, we need to introduce these two properties. Uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, then we can study these Galois extensions. And we will find that uh, uh, for Galois extensions, we can describe uh, the, uh, what happens very precisely in terms of some group, which is called the Galois group. And so, uh, therefore, we want to introduce these things. So we introduce first in what a normal extension is. So the definition is a bit strange, maybe. It actually looks rather strange in the first moment. So an algebraic extension uh, 
uh, say L over K. So it's supposed to be an algebraic extension if so all the elements are algebraic, is called normal. Well, <coughs> uh, if every irreducible polynomial, so So f, which coefficients in the smaller field, which has a zero in the bigger field, already splits into linear factors. So this, uh, so for one thing, this word normal, we will find out later, is somehow related also to normal subgroups. So there is a group associated to this extension, which is the Galois group, and uh, normal extensions correspond to normal subgroups. So there is some relation between the two words normal, but we are not, we are far away from that now. But if you look at this definition, it looks like a pretty, uh, bad one, because how are you ever going to check that? You know, if you have uh, this field extension, you take any irreducible polynomial, you know, there will be very, very many, which has a zero in L, and then it already is supposed to split. You know, we don't even, you know, it doesn't even seem to be obvious whether there are any normal extensions at all. But in fact, it's not at all so difficult. Well, first give me an example of a uh, non-normal extension, which we have already seen. So, example, if we take uh, Q, the third root of 2 over Q, this is not normal. And because we have seen that uh, you know in the example before that uh, obviously the third root of 2 is a zero of x to the third minus 2 which is an irreducible polynomial uh, over q uh, in q third root of 2 but the polynomial does not split there uh, x third minus 2 does not split into linear factors over this field. Because we have seen that, uh, you know, in the complex numbers there are two other roots and they are complex numbers. We can certainly never obtain a complex number which is not real uh, in this field, which is a subfield of the real numbers. Okay, so we, have, uh, we know that there are some field extensions which are not normal, but now we want to see that uh, it's very easy, I mean, there's an easy criterion for a field extension to be normal, namely, a finite algebraic extension will be normal if and only if the bigger field is the splitting field of a field of a polynomial from the smaller field. So theorem. A finite extension so a finite field extension L over K is normal if and only if K, L is the splitting field of a polynomial um, 
f in kx. That's somewhat surprising because, you know, it's a very different. Now, here we say every irreducible polynomial splits. And here we basically are requiring that one polynomial splits. But, you know, we take the smallest field where this one polynomial splits. So that doesn't seem to be very likely to be true. But <coughs> still, that's our theorem. So let me see how much time I have. Mm -hmm. So we can still try. So we. So obviously, the difficult part is this. If, if it is a splitting field, we have to show it's normal. So this is really the thing which is unexpected. So therefore, it must be require some kind of idea. And here we will use these things about extension of field isomorphisms in a somewhat unexpected way. So we take a splitting field. of some polynomial f with coefficients in the smaller field k. So now we, sh uh, we sh have to take any irreducible polynomial and see that it splits, which has a 0, and have to see that it splits. So let g, your polynomial with coefficients in kx, be irreducible. with the zero alpha in f. Now we have to see that all the zeros that it has in any extension of L actually already lie in L. So we have to show um, G splits over L into linear factors. So let now beta be another 0 of g in some extension of L. We know that it, uh, you know, we, we, we can divide, divide by x minus alpha, and then it will have a, uh, <coughs> so, <coughs> and then this will have an, a 0 over some extension. So let beta be uh, Another, so beta different from alpha, well, be another zero of f over an extension um, of l. So we have to show that beta actually lies in f. Because, you know, by induction we can, you know, so that means all the zeros over any extension lie in L, so it splits over L into linear factors. So, so then result follows from this. L splits. Uh, F splits over L. So let's see. So and now our polynomial G is irreducible. And alpha and beta are two zero. So we have a simple algebraic extension, you know, K of alpha and k of beta. And so there is an isomorphism between them. So, so since g is irreducible, um, we have that, say, k alpha 
over k and um, k beta over k are simple algebraic extensions with the same minimal polynomial. So alpha and beta have the same minimal polynomial, which is G. And so by the theorem that we had for extension of field isomorphisms, we find that there is an isomorphism from K alpha to K beta. from k alpha to k beta, which sends alpha to beta. I don't know whether I actually need it anyway. V of alpha is equal to beta. OK, so this is the first thing. But we also have to use the story again, the other story with the field, extension of field isomorphisms for splitting fields. So L is a splitting field of G over K. So it's also the splitting field of G over K alpha because that's an intermediate field. So L is a splitting field of G over K. And K alpha is intermediate field. So L is a splitting field. Of G over K alpha. Now, um, no, not G. You know, you should pay attention, no? F. <laughs> okay. Um, and on the other hand, if I take L of beta, so if we join beta to L, if beta is already in L, it doesn't become bigger, but uh, otherwise it's different is a splitting field of f over k of beta. Because, um, you know, certainly it uh, splits. Uh, uh, f splits over l of beta because already splits over, uh, over l. And the smallest field which contains k beta and or which it splits, splits is this one. Because you know, the condition that contains k beta means precisely that it contains beta. So this is a splitting field of this. But now, you know, there comes uh, somehow the trick. Because you know, this somehow means we can extend this isomorphism here to an isomorphism between these two, which means that they have the same size. So by the extension of field isomorphisms to the splitting field, we have that there is an isomorphism of fields phi uh, from uh, L to L beta with phi restricted to k of alpha is equal to our map phi. But you know, now this is really, so somehow <clears throat> that looks a bit like cheating because 
now we have all of, you know, all of a sudden these two fields have the same size. And now, obviously, we are done. We just have to uh, do it. So we have this. So in particular, we have that phi restricted to k is equal to the identity. So we have, a, so we have an isomorphism from this field to this field, which is the identity on this. But if it's an isomorphism between fields, it's in particular an isomorphism of k-vector spaces. So you know, it's an isomorphism which is the identity on k, so it's an isomorphism of k-vector spaces. Of k-vector spaces. So this means these two fields have the same dimension. So L and K, so we have that L over K is equal to L of beta over K. And so if you use the degree theorem, it follows that uh, L, maybe I can wipe it out. By the degree theorem, we have that L of beta over L is equal to uh, L of beta over K divided by L over K, which is 1. So this means these two fields are equal. You know, we know that you know, this is a field extension, and the degree is 1. So it follows that L is equal to L of beta. And that means beta is in L. OK, so this is a rather surprising proof. So we can also see that it was quite useful to prove this uh, statement about the extension of field uh, isomorphisms, because it gives you kind of uh, a nice handle to, to do this. So this, this is only one half of the proof. But uh, so the, the trivial direction we will uh, do uh, next time, I mean, the almost trivial direction we'll do next time, and uh, I don't want to rush it now. So we, uh, I expect we see each other on Wednesday. No? <laughs> so are there any questions or comments? Am I too fast? A little bit. Ah, OK, so I maybe can try to slow down a little bit. OK, yeah, thank you.